peace. Peace be unto you. My aunt Violet was an avid filter. She was skilled at taking the strangest little bits of fabric, small pieces that you or I might easily discard, and she would shape them into beautiful pieces of functional art. This cushion was actually one of hers, made from bits and scraps pulled together to make something beautiful. And I assure you that it just happened to be a cushion that was the smallest and easiest thing to bring in rather than a quilt to show <laughs> some of her work. It's not because I plan on taking a snooze during service. <laughs> I was always amazed at how beautiful her quilts were, how colorful and intricate the patterns. I was always familiar with the art of quilt making, as the church that I grew up in, the Baptist Church in St. Andrews, had a women's guild, which actually was a quilting group. And I remember the group gathering them on a regular basis, everyone sitting in their respective spot around the quilting frame and working away together each one contributing their unique skills, while all were talking about things that were going on within their lives. Their lives, the life of the community, and the life of the church. This group existed long before I was born, and it lasted many years after I had grown up and moved away. Through their hard work, they raised thousands of dollars for the work of the church, and every quilt they made was either sold, was raffled, or it was made as a result of a special commission that somebody had requested to pay for. And I'm not sure whether it was my aunt or through this group that I first saw the plaque. And here come out the visual aids. Blessed are the peacemakers. <laughs> a slight revision to Jesus' message delivered on the mount. As a child, this made me giggle, and I thought how witty it was. But now, not only do I think that it's witty, I also see the wisdom. I recently came across a plaque that had taken this very familiar phrase and added to it. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they take mismatched pieces of fabric and make something beautiful. Peacemakers believe all fabric, whether the color or the texture, just need a complementary swatch to bring out its beauty. Peacemakers treasure every scrap, knowing in the right layout it will shine. Peacemakers know that the true beauty always come from the mosaic, not from the perfection. The true beauty always comes from the mosaic. The gathering together of all those little pieces that are different, not the same. Not in the perfection of the work. Sounds like the work that Jesus was doing. In gathering people and talking with people with whom did he connect everyone. Everyone. Taking mismatched pieces of fabric and making something beautiful, knowing that the beauty comes from the mosaic, not the perfection. The collection of all the different patterns and the textures being placed side by side, connected through thread and bound to one another. The art of peace making. What an illustration for life today. I know that there were artistic differences that existed between some of the guild members, but you know, in the end, they never let their differences come between them. They never let their differences split them up or to spoil the work that they did together. When, when there was a difference, they talked about it, most often with their heads down, needle in hand, and working away. They listened to each other as they shared their opinions, and in doing this, there was a great deal of peacemaking. 
that took place while putting together their quilts. I know that my aunt, who went to the Catholic Church and was not part of the Baptist Women's Guild, had a lot of respect for the Baptist Women's Guild, even to the point of having them work on several of the quilts that she was making. This may not sound like much to you, but even though the days of deep hatred and division between Catholic and Protestant have passed, it still wasn't common to have a lot of contact and shared activity within my town while I was growing up. But my aunt didn't pay much attention to this. In our community, it was peacemakers, the quilters, working with their assortment of different scraps, their discarded fabric who opened the doors of connection to one another. It could be said that the peacemakers were really peacemakers, hoping to bridge the gap between differences of opinion and theology and social standing. So you see, in the end, this group always chose the path of peace and connection with each other and with others in the broader community. Yes, it could be argued that it's true that the very nature of what they did, sitting quietly, listening to music, chatting while cutting small scraps of fabric into smaller scraps of fabric, only then to sew them all together with batting and backing, was in itself an activity that helped to foster community and connection naturally. Absolutely, that would be true. After all, the act of peacemaking, quilting, isn't actually much of a contact sport. <laughs> it isn't an activity that has people choosing sides and cheering for their chosen side. It doesn't call for participants to crawl into a ring to see who's left standing. And quilters don't usually come to blows with one another. It's a far more gentle activity than some. But we also know that no matter what the nature of the activity, where two or more people do anything together, there's potential for disagreement and hurt feelings. Snide or sarcastic comments can easily be made, causing hurt feelings. This group of peacemakers never chose to take that path. Instead, they always chose the path that led to peace. What I saw while I was growing up was a group of people, of peacemakers, who welcomed others. All the mismatched people, the ones that others had discarded because they didn't see any use for them. And they added them into their group. They taught them their skills, and they made them feel a part of something bigger than themselves. And every person was cherished and added to the group, gaining their own place at the quilting frame, adding their unique handiwork to the overall project. The quilters, the peacemakers of my childhood, recognized the beauty in the mosaic, not only in what they made, but with each other. They did not look for perfection in either. Each of us have the opportunity to be peacemakers. Children of God, as Jesus refers to them in his sermon from the Mount, the path of doing this is laid out by Paul, as we heard earlier in the letter to the early church in Rome. Work towards peace, never returning hurt and evil to those who have hurt you. Walk away from revenge. That's for God to look after. And never let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Whether we are aware of it or not, each one of us is stitching together a quilt, the, the quilt of our lives. And it's made from the evidence of our lives, the things that we do, the things that people know us for. Don't get wrapped up in perfection. Always doing everything right. But work towards making a beautiful quilt of 
peace, reflecting your love of life's mosaic. May it shine through every fire rather than your drive for perfection. Zachariah's prophecy about his own son, the little baby who would become known as John, the one who baptized, is a reminder to all of us that there will be those amongst us who point to God's love and peace just by their very presence. Although there are some who have a natural gift to do this, every one of us can be peacemakers if we choose. No one sat down at the quilting frame because they were forced or they were coerced. Each one sat down as a result of their own personal choice. And one last reflection that I'll share with you is I've been thinking about this group of women who played such a big role in the church while I was growing up. Although the group is now disbanded as the group got older and simply couldn't keep the quilting guild going, the handiwork of this group is still enjoyed in the homes and the lives of many people today. If we sow seeds of peace wherever we are and with whomever we can, we will always have a lasting effect as peacemakers. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. Christmas is a reminder to hold on to peace for all of us who walk the Christian spiritual path. Christmas is also a reminder for us to practice peace, to share it with others. May we all be blessed with peace and take peace out with us into the world. Amen.